Minister warns that a large-scale ground invasion's implications are uncertain. Estimating the use of 10,000 troops, he anticipates significant strategic challenges. There could be a strong adverse reaction from the Muslim world with countries from Indonesia to Morocco expressing extreme discontent. McGregor predicts the formation of a military alliance against Israel in the region, with Turkey potentially joining, an outcome he deems more concerning than Iran's involvement. McGregor addresses a common misconception regarding the deterrent effect of offshore naval on Turkey, Iran, and other regional players. He doubts that anyone will pay much heed to these capabilities, emphasizing the limited impact naval power can have with only a fraction of jets operational at any given time, primarily over northern Israel where the focus lies. He highlights the vulnerability to air defense systems, particularly the S-400S in Syria and northern Lebanon. There's a growing concern that such confrontations could escalate into a broader regional conflict, particularly if Turkey aligns with Iran and other regional powers against Israel. This, he asserts, poses the greatest threat to Israel's existence, underscoring the urgent need for intervention to prevent what he sees as a path towards disaster, particularly with Netanyahu's leadership, so the issue at hand is the recent shift in stance. Suddenly, it's framed as a holy war with a firm defense of territory. This signals an unambiguous alignment with Israel's opponents, a departure from previous positions. It underscores the need for a president with the authority to intervene and reject Israel's plans. Drawing a parallel to past diplomatic interventions like Nixon's handling of the Suez Canal crisis, emphasizes the importance of strong leadership in such situations. Yeah, that's another concern. Why would you want to put that at risk right now? The Egyptians have tried very hard to work with Israel. In fact, we know that the Egyptian general and military intelligence alerted the Israelis to the possibility of this Hamas attack. At least that's what the public record says. So that's another problem, you know, if you've got a population that's enraged, and that's the case all over the Muslim world right now, certainly in Egypt. How do you, General C.I., who's leading Egypt, suppress the tendency to say we must defend and protect our brothers in Gaza? Israel doesn't want a war with Israel, but how do you keep them out under the circumstances? I think it's the same thing for Jordan. I mean, the King of Jordan has done the same thing, tried to cultivate a good and positive relationship with Israel, but they all say the same thing. Collective punishment does not equate to individuals like Lindsey Graham, among others, and even figures like Norman Poritz, who previously advised John McCain, have expressed a persistent desire for conflict with Iran. This fixation on Iran's destruction has been long-standing. Now it seems that neoconservatives along with globalists are seizing the opportunity to pursue military action against Iran. They're actively advocating for it, as seen in the recent push from figures like former Senator Joseph Lieberman. While some may discuss limited strikes, the reality of war is that once it begins, there are no half measures. The idea that targeted attacks wouldn't escalate into full-scale conflict is unrealistic. Certainly this has been an ongoing sentiment, it's not a recent development. These individuals have consistently expressed this desire for years. They believe that now they have the opportunity to act on it. They perceive the current administration as one they can influence and push into action, with many inside the Biden cabinet eager to confront Iran. This fixation on attacking Iran overshadows other regional dynamics, for instance. While attention is on Iran, there's a significant Turkish military presence moving through Syria towards the Golan Heights. This aspect isn't receiving adequate consideration. Additionally, the safety concerns of the eastern Mediterranean hinder the deployment of forces, making the vicinity of Sicily a preferable location for carrier battle groups. The assumption is that decisive Israeli action in Gaza could trigger a two-front conflict involving Hezbollah and other regional actors like Syria, Turkey, Iran, and potentially Russia. Despite Russia's historical accommodation of Israeli interests, Recent events in Ukraine may compel Moscow to support Iran to prevent its destruction, creating a situation reminiscent of the complexities leading up to world war. In Turkey, we currently have nuclear weapons stored, a matter that surfaced in the final months of the Trump administration. I advocated for their swift removal due to uncertain future circumstances. Mr. Erdogan's leadership in Turkey presents a unique challenge, unlike any other leader since the fall of the Ottoman Empire. However, the question arises regarding our military bases there, including in Sirlik and others. These bases host our personnel and assets. Should they be at risk of seizure or encirclement by Turkish forces, the potential fallout from such a scenario would be far more significant than the current hostage situation in God. Presently, there are no apparent advantages for the United States in this situation. Instead, it poses a risk of entanglement without adequate Preparation, well, reports indicate that we do indeed have special operations forces deployed, which shouldn't come as a surprise. There was an unfortunate incident where a photograph surfaced showing American special op soldiers in Israel, prompting some attention before their identities were obscured. 
As for their numbers, estimates vary. Had there been American casualties already? Well, it's known that during a joint reconnaissance mission with Israeli counterparts, there was heavy gunfire resulting in several injuries and at least one fatality among our forces. However, such operations are usually kept discreet both in success and failure due to their sensitive nature. So yes, they're present and actively engaged. No, it's my belief that they would have initiated action already if we hadn't insisted on bolstering our capabilities in the region. We're deploying Patriot missiles, high-altitude air defense radars, and missiles to various locations not exclusively in Israel to counter the Iranian missile threat. As we're also deploying another carrier battle group forming a task force, it's likely that once these assets are in place, the plan is to proceed with troop movements. Deployment now addressing the second question regarding innocent civilians. The reality is that entering such an environment is immensely complex and hazardous. When I say dirty, I'm referring not to filth, but to the difficulty of navigating through a city resembling Dresden in 1945, which has been transformed by conflict. Rooting out thousands of armed enemies ranging from shoulder-fired weapons to anti-tank missiles amidst large-scale mortar attacks presents a formidable challenge. In such circumstances, soldiers, whether Israeli, American, British, or otherwise, have little choice but to react swiftly to perceived threats, prioritizing survival and neutralizing the enemy. I think so. I think so. I think we're about to learn some hard lessons from open borders and uncontrolled immigration. Everybody forgets that the people that flew those aircraft into the buildings on 9-11 into the towers in New York had all come to the United States giggly. They overstayed their welcome and they had become illegal aliens inside the United States, but nobody tracked them. And if you didn't track them, they were essentially free to go and do whatever they wanted, and we know that now. We know that they went and took flight lessons in Florida, and the only lesson they were interested in is how do you take off. Nobody cared about whether or not you landed. You would have thought somebody would have said kind of a red flag, but you know, the bottom line is that's true. We're going to see it, and we know that Isabella and Amy Costs have very large presences in Mexico. Of the two, Hizba is much larger, better financed, better organized than the Hamas presence. But there are a lot of Sunni and Shia Muslims in Mexico. There's a very large community. We have to assume, in fact, I've been told that they have cells inside the United States, and when they attack, we'll find out how lethal they are. Historically, the Israelis, from what I've observed, have consistently made efforts to avoid civilian casualties. I haven't seen any evidence suggesting that Israeli pilots or officers have intentionally targeted places like churches, mosques, or hospitals. While it's possible that this approach has shifted, that's been my experience. Similarly, our military operates under the same principle, despite misconceptions. Mistakes can happen, as demonstrated during the Kovo Air Campaign when the Chinese embassy in Belgrade was mistakenly targeted due to errors in interpreting targeting information. Regarding Admiral Kirby, I hope he's prepared to provide a similar explanation if Americans are harmed in attacks carried out by individuals with extremist ideologies. Such attacks, similar to those seen in Europe, are a real possibility in the United States, and discovering that those responsible are within our population could understandably unsettle the settle. He doesn't believe anyone in Washington is currently interested in scaling back. If anything, he sees the opposite, very few voices advocating for caution amid heightened emotions. He stresses the importance of considering both strategic and operational implications as well as taking seriously intelligence about potential attacks, including those targeting the U.S. and Israel. However, he observes a lack of such considerations. He predicts an enraged American and European population, if drawn into conflicts fueled by support for terrorist organizations like ISIS. Despite this, he emphasizes the continued obligation to prioritize American security. Perceived failures in border protection and domestic security, he hopes Americans will express anger over these shortcomings promptly.